Um, and I'd like to introduce our first uh, speakers. So it's uh, Sandy and Rock from Schiphol Airport. And um, we were here at the last Measure Camp. And uh, I think after the talks, Sandy and Rock came up to us. And they were like, we're Schiphol Airport. We use Snowplow. And it, it was awesome. And uh, now, like a little, a little while after that, we're hearing from them. And we're hearing their story about, uh, about Snowplow and how they've been using it. So uh, yeah, I'll hand over to uh, Sandy and Rock from Schiphol. So I take full responsibility for this corny title, but yeah, let's be honest, the, the internet has seen, his, uh, has seen better days. If you look at the last week, I don't want to be in Zuckerberg's shoes, <laughs> but that's really big. I want to talk about a personal frustration I have and a personal frustration I like to solve. And that's if this thing works. Removing the internet from all the obnoxious and irrelevant targeted ads I see across the web. So to take an example, a real life example that I saw three months ago is from a web shop. A web shop that I've been shopping at for over a period of two to three years. And as an analyst, I think after two or three years, I'm not doing, doing any name calling. It's not a Dutch <laughs> company. so. Don't be worried. But I, as an analyst, I think, okay, you should have a clear profile. You know my buying behavior, you know when I buy certain things, when I buy my trousers, what kind of brands I like. So two weeks ago, I gave it another shot and I went to this web shop, browsed. I wanted a new pair of brands, weather is out, it's nice. And I bought them. And as things go, I move on to my timeline and I'm always really curious how a company follows up. So I'm always waiting for this moment. So I started scrolling and I, then it started to show up, this ad. And I had to take a moment to digest what was happening on my timeline. At first I was thinking, okay, is my girlfriend going to my phone? Is she looking, browsing for products? Because do I need to wear makeup or is maybe the system trying to tell me something. <laughs> I don't know. But the frustration started kicking in. I don't know about you, but this is something I still face on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really don't understand it. We have all these cool technologies out there. We have so much data. GDPR is 25th of May, so we can do, still do a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> so, I'm Sandy Cartopaviro, I work at a company called Schiphol, also known as Amsterdam Airport. Yeah, my name is Roke Hens, I'm a data scientist also at Schiphol Airport. And we're trying to solve a part of this puzzle. So this is our agenda for today. We're going to talk about our use case. This little tiny part of the puzzle we're trying to solve. We're going to talk about the struggles we had solving that and we're going to share our solution. We're going into depth on how we're using Snowplow in combination with Relay42 to target the right audience. And then we'll share a live demo, uh, which we tested and should turn out okay. <laughs> okay, so upcoming holiday is the May holiday here in the Netherlands. If you've read the news last year, the May holiday is an extremely busy season at Schiphol. You have a lot of people coming to the airport that are leaving for their holiday. And we can roughly see two groups. You have the people that are well prepared, arranged their holiday already in December, and already booked a parking spot to park at Schiphol. You also have those people who book last minute and are looking at the very last point to reserve a parking spot. And that's an issue. So we have a product called P3, and it's a very affordable parking product. You can stay for a very long time and park your car when you're on holiday. What we're doing is that during the March period, halfway March, when people are looking to park at P3, we're redirecting those users. We're redirecting those users to another product. It's a product called P6. And there the, the problem starts. 
That's not the only thing. We're also doing that for the people that are well prepared and are raising their holiday and are looking to book in July. So if you want to go on your summer holiday in July and you're looking for P3, we're saying, okay, shoot, go to another product and park at P6 in this case. Preferably, we as a company don't want to redirect those users. We want to target them with P3 because P3 is still widely available and P6 is a totally different product. P6 is a valet parking product, so that means that you hand, have to hand over your keys to another person and give, put their trust in their hands. Also, it's way more expensive. In the high peak season, it can be twice the price of a P3 product. And also as a company, we're seeing lower conversion rates. And of course, we see that it's less relevant. And also people are really frustrated when we target them with P6. So this is our case. So then Rock and I started brainstorming, okay, what kind of cool things can we do to solve this case? But before we start, you always have to sit in a room with some other departments. So we mostly talk with our marketing team, of course. What kind of me message are we going to convey? We're talking with our developers and we're talking with our legal department. And that goes a little bit something like this. So you have legal shouting out, okay, GDPR. <laughs> mostly in these kind of discussions, we have marketing <coughs> being really, really quiet. Then we have our developers screaming out the code. Okay, we don't want, it, want to place any additional code on our website. We don't want to influence the performance. Of course, that's very important. Then legal shouts again, no data deduplication. So for us, it's very important that we don't copy data over into several systems. We want the data as much in one system so that we are more in control. Other thing is that security comes around the corner. We want to have control of our data. So we all know the Facebook case. We as Schiphol want to be in control of the data. We want to also be GDPR compliant. So if anyone in this room sends us a mail and asks us, can you delete the records you have of me? We want to be able to do that in every system. So quite a list. So the first day starting this use case, yeah. <coughs> with, with a bit in a pickle, okay, what are we going to do? But we, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be standing here, have a solution. So how does our solution stack look like? So we started off with Snowplow almost a year ago, and we built a very solid pipeline that's now able to push data in real time. And we followed up with connecting it to Relay42. Relay42 provides us with an interface that marketeers can easily use for, to target specific groups across different channels. Then we took a little bit of an exotic route. So instead of working a lot with JavaScript and using a Google, like a tag management system or the Relay42 tag management system to push data, we started <coughs> working to send out data via the server side. So we do that through Google Analytics. We're going to show you in a little bit how that works. And then we're pushing out segments to double click and AdWords. Looks a bit over engineered, but I will explain in a bit why. I'll hand over the mic and the speaker to Rock. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, yeah, so as Sandy mentioned, um, we want to get uh, our users' data in, uh, so let's break that down. So when first we have, uh, first there is a browser, right, and they visit our website, and <clears throat> uh, a Google, uh, Google Analytics tags, uh, tag is fired, and the user is assigned a uh, Google ID. Uh, second, we fire our snowplow tracker, which we managed to convince the developers to include. That was the one thing we got. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that one, in turn, uh, 
passes uh, us the Google ID, uh, the Google ID to our Snowplow pipeline, so we can now work with it. And of course, the user does some things on the website as well, and we can now study their behavior. And if they looked at certain products, we can retarget them. So the user then leaves. Uh, their session expires, so our expire time is like half an hour right now. Uh, however, what we do is we uh, aggregate the data we've collected and we uh, send it to Relay42 where we do the segmentation. So uh, currently we have a business rule there that decides that that user was looking at parking uh, in May. And if they did, then we will be retargeting them. So this data is uh, sent to DoubleClick or Google AdWords. Um, so let's uh, show how that looks like. Uh, we've prepared a small toy uh, example of this. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Which? Uh, Mm hmm This one. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so we start off uh, by reading data from Kinesis. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the technical background of uh, Snowplow, but basically we're using Kinesis for our uh, Q uh, and message passing. So here I'm reading messages going back uh, a bit, and it seems I'm having problems there. <laughs> hmm. We are in line. Let's see, let's see, maybe. Yes, uh, quite a few, okay. So each one of these is basically one uh, page view or uh, update, whatever, so, some user's action, right? Um, now, here we extract um, events that we call valid events. Well, in our case, it's page views. And we do something to these records to get the right data out. Um, and we only pick the ones that are related to parking. So now we have 700 <laughs> events. So that's like one third. And then uh, if we look at an example of that, so these are the users, right? So these are uh, the only data about the event is actually this. So uh, which period was the user looking to book? And um, we also assigned them an experiment number. So we're only doing one at the moment. And uh, which number, which group, uh, experiment group do they belong to? Are they control or test? So now that we have these records, right, uh, we can uh, send them over to Relay. So that's where we go, we're off to. Um, so Relay will accept uh, various uh, information about a uh, user. So in this case, uh, we have a user that we make up their uh, ID for just to not mess with our production. With our production. Uh, and we attach some data about the parking period they supposedly had. Uh, and we make a, uh, a RESTful call and we get back the ID of the user. So this is the ID, the ID that we now know the user under. Um, we can attach also the AB split. So the previous records I showed, they already had the AB split, but here I'm just calculating it extra. And we also attach that to the record. So for, you see, to, to this record that we previously created, we know its ID. So we're attaching to it uh, the, the name of the experiment, the control test group split, and that's that. And moving on, uh, we attach also the Google Analytics ID because we will be needing it later to, to pass our segmentation to Google. Uh, so we can retarget. Where does this code live? This code lives in Amazon. So yes, it's yes. 
Uh, currently, well, this obviously is on the laptop, right? It's a toy, <laughs> it's a toy example. <laughs> but yes, uh, the, the, the production is, uh, uh, lives in Amazon Lambda, yeah. Um, so uh, then we want to see what uh, Relay decided about uh, segmentation now, right? It got all this data. So here we go. Um, it's placed into, uh, I believe this is, this is inside, outside. So this is outside of our retargeting segment. Um, so okay, this, this user will not be uh, retargeted. Um, however, right, just to prove that I'm not lying, if we change the, the, the uh, period uh, and do it again, and call the segment out, we now see that it's uh, segment number 101, which is within the period that will be retargeted, right? Um, and that's that for demo, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So if the question popped up in your head and you think, okay, why not you go for the easy route and connect your website directly with Relay? We have a couple of takeaways for that. For us, this is our winner. And that's for a couple of reasons. One of the biggest reasons was when we spoke to Relay and we wanted to create segments out of specific data attributes. So we wanted, for example, to select the last viewed entry and parking date. We wanted to select the most viewed product. For all these cal calculations, we had to do a cookie drop with a counter. This is just one use case. If I were to calculate all these data reviews for all the use cases we have, I had to go to my developer and say, OK, I have like 100 cookie counters that are going to store facts about a user and the last thing or the most viewed thing they viewed. That's not acceptable. With Snowplow, we can do this. These are basically really simple calculations, but we can also do very advanced calculations and send that, those data attributes as facts to Relay. Very important factor. We're also full in control, full control of data retention. How long do we keep data? When we want to omit records of the database, we can do it in a whip. We're also in full control. If we want to update records, add more context to a data set, we can do it quite easily. And that's for us a plus opposed to a implementation where we're using Relay42 directly via their tag management system. So that's the biggest reason. So I started with the internet a better place, so, so is it now with our case? Uh, I leave that up to you, but what we do see so we're doing this as an experiment where we have a control group and our test group. So we can easily validate if it is the case. So we do see a very huge improvement in CTR. And I was really, really flabbergasted by that. The improvement in CTR was huge. And also when we look in at the conversion rate, we also see a very big uplift when we launch this case. So for us, it was a very simple thing, and we started thinking, why didn't we do this sooner? Because it's so simple. But we because we started so small, we already have a huge impact. And s s my belief is that if we continue on this route, I will reach my personal goal and make the internet a bit of a better <laughs> place. <laughs> this concludes our talk for today. And I thank you for your time and your comments. Yeah, so in, in double click, we also have our exclusion RC audience when uh, somebody uh, doesn't uh, okay, over so there. Yeah. Do that part in Snowplow and then 
no, no. But you could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you should also consider firing the defense from uh, basically generated by the server. Uh, if you see someone trying to book a parking spot but it's not available, then send an event so you can just say, okay, everyone who didn't find the parking spot on P3, let's show them. Yeah. Uh, uh, not yet. Could be uh, a thing to optimize on the use case. Now we're only sending data once the session expires, just to be on the safe side. So that's that was the very yeah, low hanging fruit and a very easy key case to deploy. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. So do you really need to relay in between? Okay. Okay. Um, so we wanted to avoid that question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess you can, um, but yeah, but uh, our marketeers need an interface to, to segment users, and that's also really, really important for us. <coughs> and if we hand them over the keys to a notebook or our Amazon environment, <laughs> I don't know, if <coughs> I'm so happy with that. Sorry? Teach them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something about left and right brain, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You say they have they need a useful interface, is that where their work starts and you go, good luck, or are you still involved, or how's that work? Yeah, so we, we have a, like a core team that works together and we start off with building our use case. So they, they have their creative creative minds rolling and uh, telling us what to do and, and we basically translate that to data attributes we need to, to build a case. And once we have those data attributes, we make that available in Relay42. And then they can start segmenting and creating their campaign flows. Yeah. Does that answer? Yeah. yeah okay. Great. Yeah. Um, what, that's a really cool use case. What <coughs> else are you guys thinking about uh, doing with the, with the stream and with Relay 42 as well? Yeah. Um, so in the coming two weeks, we're rolling out the integration with email. And then it will be a totally different ball game. So because we have so much email addresses that we can target, um, and we're looking to set up uh, four additional use cases by the end of this year. Yeah, yeah, and more channel integrations, basically. Yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Awesome. Thank you so Great. much. Thank you. Oh.